fairies and princesses, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Disney Coast to Coast. Hey folks, and welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, the ultimate unofficial Disney fan podcast. I'm Jeff DePauli. I'm Patrick Dougal. I'm John Tartaglia. Oh my God, we got John Tartaglia <laughs> in the house. Johnny in the house. Johnny and the Sprites, yes. of course. And uh, we go kind of way back. A long like, time back. I met Johnny when he was doing earning a Tony nomination in Avenue Q on yes. Broadway. Yes. Which was, what, 2001? That was, uh, no, that was 2004. Four. Four. So it's like yes. 11, 11 years okay. ago. Where uh, there was the big Avenue Q wicked battle. And, yes. Uh, not a battle. <laughs> no, not no, no. Battle. There was the battle. No, seriously, I have a friend. I was obsessed <laughs> there with were I mean, we weren't in a battle. <laughs> no, Other they, people they weren't in a battle. battle. It was the fanatics. And I was obsessed with Avenue Q. I had a friend obsessed with Wicked. And um, she literally sent me a congratulatory text when <laughs> Avenue Q won Best Musical. She was I like, know. I felt bad because like, people would say that there was like a battle. I was like, no one's battling. Course. I'm not battling. First of all, let's just say in general, the Broadway community doesn't battle with each other. No. Like it's such a supportive community. So it's just the fans, the crazy fans. Yeah. Which was lovely because it meant people cared about the shows yeah, and, and certainly like it's not like Wicked you know wasn't doing like everyone was doing uh, great like everyone was still, suffering it's still running on Broadway it's still on Broadway so, so everybody's fine doing, but, but, but uh, yeah just a little memory lane for you do, oh you, rem gosh. do you remember this uh, where, that's Bruce that's weird <laughs> I love that's it. you oh my god and Rod signed it. Your puppet. That is hilarious. Isn't that funny? You know, I actually kind of remember signing this. <laughs> there you go. You shared your company. I'm, I'm not, my signature is ridiculous. I don't know what I was doing. Like, it's very, like, wispy. And <laughs> yeah. bizarre. Look who you share with. Next page. Oh, Remember, he's amazing. He's such yeah. a cool guy. He was so nice. He invited us to his home in wow. Conquer. He, like, drew something. He drew pictures, yeah. In wow. any case, there's that. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. I found that the other day. I'm like, oh, and Johnny's coming on the show. Cool. Oh my God. <laughs> in any case, that's, uh, that's our history. And by the way, Avenue Q, if you're not familiar with it written by bobby lopez and jeff marks and jeff witty yes mm -hmm. and bobby lopez disney fans of course know him from finding frozen. nemo the musical and frozen and working on gigantic and was there another one the winnie the pooh the what? winnie the pooh film did he work on that he and his wife wrote yeah, the music for that was the, the that was disney's first test before they gave him frozen Ew, i didn't even realize oh, come that. on jeff i know sorry mm -hmm. fail epic fail uh but in any case just had to mention that before we go on we like to start with our guests with this five questionnaire oh god thing where it's it's opinion it's not there's no right or wrong okay. but it kind of introduces us to you as a disney fan and what kind of stuff you love so so everyone's going to judge me basically on this. Basically. Got it. Okay. I feel like I might know some of the answers to this already. You probably, do. you probably do. Pat, why don't you start? All right. First big question. Favorite Disney animated movie? Ooh. Hmm. Um, Beauty and the Beast. Nice choice. Yeah. yeah. It's a great one. It's the first one I saw with my parents and it was a, like as a well, I saw others <laughs> yeah, but, but in the theater yeah. and that I remember seeing with my, with my mom. And I remember it was the first time I ever cried in front of my mom, Aww. which was both like wonderful and horrifying. <laughs> Hum humiliating because you were yeah. like, 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 how old were you? Like eight? I was like, uh, let's see, 1990. I was like 12. 90, uh, 12. So it's, that's, that's the first awkward. movie you remember seeing? It, well, it with, animated like with my mom that was like, I guess maybe not with, it's probably not the first Disney film, but it's like the first time I remember being like emotionally moved by a Disney film and outwardly crying in a movie theater with my mom. And she was okay. She's like, it's okay. Which makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, don't say that. You're not supposed to notice. Yeah. You're not supposed I, was, uh, I, was, I was a mess. But yes, so that's my favorite. Awesome. How about favorite Disney ride? Oh, you guys. All right. I, know, um, <laughs> I, I should have, you know, driving here, I was like, they're going to ask me questions I'm not going to be prepared for. Uh... Well, it's it's not okay. Can I give you? It's a two I know. Part. Well, I know <laughs> what you want to say. Can it be a two it part? It can, but if you're talking about a show, save that. Okay, I'm gonna save it because I know what you're talking about. Okay. Well, my favorite ride does not exist anymore. Okay, mm -hmm. that's, that's was fair. Horizons. Oh. Wow. I used to love Horizons. For those who don't know it, describe Horizons. If you don't know Horizons, <laughs> I don't know why you're watching this. No, um, Horizons was a ride in Epcot Center. You notice I said Epcot Center. Notice his shirt. Figment. Hey, everyone. Um, <clears throat> and Sorry, I, it's a, I kind of liked it. This guy. <laughs> um, and it was it was a, a ride all about the future, the supposed future. It's kind of like the continuation of like the Carousel of Progress, but it was this ah, epic. My favorite. Is that your favorite? I love the Carousel of Progress. Well, this ride was like an epic journey through the future, and I it was like the slow. It was like slow moving, and like it was it was. He, do you ever ride it? Did you guys? No, no, I never. I, I saw a video. I've right. seen video. It, well, then you should educate yourself and watch it. I may it's, I may have ridden it when I was very young. I, I've been going to Walt Disney World for a long time. Yeah, it so. closed in ninety. Eight, well, the whole pavilion's closed now, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's now the yellow dome space. one. Mm -hmm. where, oh, that's the mission space. So they okay. tore yeah. down okay. and they built mission space. So I miss that ride a lot. Do you do mission space? 
I do the wimp version. I, let me, let me, let me, let me I explain. Did, let me explain. <laughs> I didn't ride it for a while because I was like, it replaced Horizons. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not having it. <laughs> no. And I was, I like would walk by and be like, no, like, like really righteous. And then one day I was like, this is ridiculous. Like it's not going to like pick up and leave. Like I got to just acknowledge that it's there. So I finally was like, I'm going to ride it. But I also am slightly claustrophobic mm-hmm. and also like, you know, you read those like warning signs and it's like, you may die if you look at this ride. <laughs> yeah. So I started like panicking. I was like, I don't know. So I'm standing like, you know, where they have like the, you yes. that, right? Yeah. Where they have like the lights where they like select you. Yeah. Like that. So I'm like, what's happening? Why am I being selected? And that freaked me out. And then I finally get on the ride. This is the first time. And then I panicked and I ran off because I was like, it's, it's too close. I don't like it. Second time I finally made myself do it. And, and I did the wimpy version. I didn't do the crazy spinny version. And I was like, that's all I need. That's all I need. I did the wimpy version once, and I will never do it again. I get selectively claustrophobic, and it's really annoying. So you don't even do the real spinny no, thing. Heck no. I've never done the real spinny thing. Um, it's the claustrophobia enough. And first of all, if there's a vomit bag, like... I agree. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the one... I mean, even um, uh, Mickey's Fun Wheel has vomit bags on it. it does? Disney California Adventure, yes. Yeah. And I was like, who needs that? And then I was on it one day, and I'm like, oh, oh my God. Oh, and the slidey one? Yeah. 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 I was like, that's intense. Like, that's more intense than it should be. I've only ridden the orange version. The is that intense. the one? How many, like, is it a repeatable ride for you? I mean, when I go, but, like, not every time. I think mo- out of every time I've been, I've maybe ridden it five times. <laughs> yeah, I, I, one was enough. I'm like, and for, second of all, I actually don't care for the ride. Like, I was like, this story bores me. I'm not, you're a big space guy. So I like maybe. space. Uh, you well, see, then you would have loved Horizons. Yeah. You would have yeah. loved Horizons. So, um. We mourn it. <laughs> we mourn her. Take a moment. There's a lot of stuff at Epcot that we mourn. Honey, I shrunk the audience. Oh, bless. Oh, oh. The original so, version of this. Yes. Which is amazing. Yeah. it's Oh, that was a great ride. That was a great ride. And what was it called? Journey into Imagination still? I, I think know. it was just Journey into Imagination. Yeah, it was, like ba- it was basic. Some, trust me. There was no with figment. <laughs> yes. or Somebody's your... going to comment and correct us if we're wrong. Yes. <laughs> that is for certain. I, yes. Okay. Here's an even tougher question. Oh, God, Favorite guys. Disney song. This can be Broadway. This can be movies. This can be theme parks. Favorite oh. Disney song. Oh, my gosh. That's hard. I know. I love, I mean, I love all of them. I'm that person. I love all of them. Um, can I pass and come back? Sure. It's like Family Feud. I'll come back at the we'll, end. We'll go back okay. and then. <laughs> Favorite theme park show or parade? This ah. is where I think you were going. <sighs> if it's I'm the rope it's, drop story. It's complicated. Okay. Yes. I <laughs> I am obsessed with the Country Bear Jamboree. Now, before anyone like posts comments is like, he's a loser. Let me explain. <laughs> I so 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 my family when I was growing up in I grew up in New Jersey South Jersey and we didn't we didn't have a lot of money so we weren't able to go to, to Disney World and this is before like it was normal that everyone went to Disney like you know what I mean like it was a big deal to go to Disney World um and so I didn't know Disney World I I, I knew a couple commercials but I didn't know what it was and so my aunt or was it my I forget who it was but got me a, the album of the Country Bear Jamboree because they knew I loved animatronics like Chuck E Cheese and Showbiz Pizza Place for those of you who are old school. <laughs> I loved it. Showbiz Pizza Place? It was like a really amazing better version of Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. Really amazing. Like a full animatronic show. It was it was like it was like a Disney World like show in a pizza parlor. It was amazing. Interesting. High quality. So I loved it. And so they got me this album and I remember I was just like, what is this? And I and I had like these this it was like full booklet. You've probably seen it. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Full booklet of all these, and I became obsessed like a with vinyl, that. right? Vinyl it was record. a vinyl. Yeah, but yeah. it was like a but there was like a storybook that yeah. was like huge. And I had like pictures of all the bears. And I remade it in my living room and Put on versions of it, and I became obs- like literally obsessed with it to the point where I wrote to like Walt Disney World. I'm like eight years old. <laughs> Walt Disney World and was like, I want to put on my own version of the Country Bear Jamboree and charge admission. Is that cool? Because I knew you had to ask permission. I'm not lying. This is all true. Um, I knew you had to ask permission, so I sent it off. And I, to their credit, to their credit, they wrote back. It's really awesome letter. I wish I'd saved it. That said, Dear John, oh, you didn't save it. I mean, maybe it's you know you living in some, behind some radiator somewhere, but it's like, dear John, um, we encourage you to put on your own production of the Country Bear Jamboree. Wish you all the success. You might find this material helpful. And they sent me like wow. black and white photos of the characters. I was like, ah! so basically, this was a very different time. This would never happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. You were an eight year old boy. Like they might have maybe. Yeah, they were like, hey, what's he gonna make? Right. But let me tell you, I built that that crap up in my room, and I opened like. The, of course, no one came. It was like three people. Came. <laughs> But it was like, I thanks, charged like Mom. 30 cents. Yeah. It was like, I was like, thanks, Mom and Grandma. That was it. So they never said, don't charge money. They were they like, never said, no. Oh, see, I they expected like, the literally no. like, we encourage you, be creative, don't charge money. No. They were basically, I could have made a mint on the Country Bay Jamboree. It's hilarious. In South Jersey Country Bay Jamboree. <laughs> so I opened it up, did that. But I was obsessed with it. And so when we went to Disney World for the first time, 
like, you know, I, we're at Rope Drop. I always tell the story. We're at Rope Drop, Magic Kingdom, my first morning at Disney World. I'm, I'm, you know, on Main Street. I'm, like, freaking out. They drop the rope. <laughs> and and I was like, the, I like to picture, like, the overhead visual of, like, if you had, like, the helicopter crane shot of, like, <laughs> let's say it's 10,000 people waiting to run to the park. Like, 9,999 run towards Space Mountain and Tomorrowland. This little homo runs <laughs> as if everyone's chasing me to the Country Bear Jamboree. Like, like, with, like, a stitch in my side. Like, I was so anxious to get there. And it was, like, before they even opened. And, like, it, but it was the Christmas show, which uh, I no longer do. Mm-hmm. And I, th- this woman was great, and she like brought me in, like gave me like my own private showing of it, and it was it was great. Men that's amazing. Me. So yes, the country by Jamboree. That's the answer. That's that, a longer story, but that's that's the answer. That's the story. I, actually, there's more to that story than I realized. I didn't realize the yeah, whole version. I, get, you I knew the rope like the drop. condensed yeah, version. Yeah, I knew yeah. the rope drop version, but it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the last question. Although we do have to go back to your yes, song I know question. I passed one. But the last the question is favorite Disney theme park. Ooh. How many have you gone to? Guys, this is hard. Um, I've been to all the state versions. Okay. I, haven't, I haven't been overseas. Oh, no, that's not true. I went to Disneyland Paris. That's not true. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, um, 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 I think it's Disneyland. Oh, nice. I really do because it's it's kind of a combo of everything. And I, I love, because I'm such a, a Disney history. dork, yeah. I love the fact that Walt, that was Walt's park and that he was there and that he lived up. You know, I love the history. <laughs> Although, all, I mean, you could literally say like, and you could be like, Disney ghetto, and I'd be like, yes. Like, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did so. you see that? What was that Disney uh, like ghetto version that they did overseas? The art installment, Dismal Land. Did you see no. this? Banksy. Oh, somebody did this. An artist what was Banksy. It? Banksy did this installment, and it was like a destroyed Disneyland. So there's like a burnt down castle. No, no, I'm no. Not okay it was this. really interesting. Okay, right. it's we'll, an art we'll exhibit. It. It's not yeah. like a- <laughs> it wasn't a real theme park. They're like, come visit, kids. <laughs> yeah, it was really interesting, but yeah. um. What were you saying? Oh, no, I read a tweet the other day that was so funny. You were talking about Disneyland and the history. They're like, Walt Disney World or the Magic Kingdom is like a really hot guy. And Disneyland is like that less hot guy who's more interesting and you want to spend all your time Oh, that's with. good. And I was like, yeah. that's kind of spot on. Yeah, and I lo- I mean, I grew up going to uh, – Dis- I didn't go to Disneyland until I was an adult. Mm-hmm. So I grew up going to Disney World. So I have, a, I have I a total fondness and love yeah. for it. But now that I'm at Disneyland more, I just appreciate like – and also like how they fit – Everything in yeah, like it's like a studio so apartment. Like, there's actually, like, how do they get all this in here? There are more attractions in Disneyland than in the Magic yeah, Kingdom. That's yeah, that's what someone said to me recently. I was like, oh, I never thought of that. But of course, because yeah. you have like Star Tours that you have things there that like mm-hmm. are in other parks. Yeah. But I'm obsessed. I love it. Well, we got to go back to the question you couldn't answer. <laughs> okay, all right. I I think why my voice flipped. Think um, <laughs> I'm gonna th- I'm gonna say something. It's okay. Like it's all right. I'm taking this very personally, Jeff. <laughs> it's documented now. Um, I think it might be you can fly. Oh, I love it. Only because it's like it's it's the whole idea of like every everyone wants. I've always wanted to fly, and just mm. like there's something about that song when I hear it, like the nostalgia factor. I'm always like, <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. All right, but nice. there's like you could name anything. I know yeah. it's it's in, the song catalog is incredible. I know it's like, like it's hard to pick. How would it? I mean, how do you guys pick? You can't pick that. I think mine is is. Probably Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow. Oh. I really, really like love so many. I love the melody of it. I yeah. love the message behind it. I that's love so the Sherman positive. Brothers. So uh, that's one. But I mean, Part of Your World, Little Mermaid's my favorite animated film. So yeah. you know. go the distance, Hercules. He oh loves yes. Hercules. Yeah. I mean, it's so good. There's. I've actually always wanted to put together like a Disney cabaret act. So I have oh. lists of songs. <laughs> well, Jeff, we'll, uh, we'll have, like, <laughs> stay tuned for yeah. more. Seriously, um, but uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, now this is not technically Disney, although it's related. The way that you started with the Jim Henson company mm-hmm. was Sesame Street. That's right. And tell everybody when you started, because this is mind-blowing. Like, <laughs> um, seriously mind-blowing. Officially at 16, unofficially at 14. 16, 14. <laughs> what were you doing at 14 and 16 years <laughs> old, ladies and gentlemen? Like, how does that happen? Um, I was I was really good at manipulation, which means for those of you who are puppet <laughs> unaware, it, it just means basically the way you move the puppet, mm-hmm. the life you bring to the puppet. Um, so I I was really good at that. So um, I was hired to basically do all these you know like group numbers and crowd scenes and things where they needed people who weren't going to necessarily speak and have dialogue, but like could could mimic choreography or do things. So. I think bec- I, I mean I was a I was a crazy obsessed person like I like I spent all my time like in my basement with my camcorder trying to learn how to puppeteer because you know when you're learning, I've seen video <laughs> it's, it's quite fabulous it's a lot yeah it's a lot in fact actually uh, someone I'm working with right now was in one of these we used to have these workshops where they would hire the puppeteers they don't do this anymore really but they would they would have these big workshops where you'd be invited 
and they would say it was a workshop. It's really an, an audition. audition. It's yeah. really a glorified audition. But it, it, you know, it'd be like a three or four day thing, and like you know, you'd start off with like 60, 70 people, and then by like the last day, we cut down to like ten. So I went to a couple of those, and one of my friends just found video of when I was like fifteen wow. with him at one of these workshops, and it's horrifying like i'm like what's happened like i'm like that's why i got beat up like, like <laughs> there's like dad glasses and like the big hair and like i'm like what's going what's it's all a mess but um but yeah so i started off doing that and, and so it was it was really it was kind of crazy like i look back now and i'm like what was happening like yeah. um but I, but i was so i so believed in it and i wanted to do it and i was so dedicated to, to learning that it became you know while other kids were off playing sports or or you know probably studying for tests <laughs> i was i was learning how to puff tear and let's just say, like, zero connections to the Jim Henson Company, right? Like, you... At the time? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I... It's not like he had a... It's not like his uncle worked for the company. No, like, no, hey, no, bring no, in no. this not kid. Like no. No, like, you... It was... It was all from writing talent. letters, and, and I was... I was... You know, I think when you're a kid, like, you... And it's a shame, because I think society's different now. I think we're such a, a negative-based society. Like, mm. and it was such an ironic and cynical society. But back then... I think there was still this sense of like optimism and like, you know, it, it, it is that like carousel of progress, like anything can happen in the future. And so like, I was imbued by that. And I, I just, I felt very like, like, well, sure, if I want to do it, it'll happen. Like, I think I secreted it long before there was such a thing as the secret, like yeah. by Oprah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was like Oprah. I was like, it's going to happen. I'm going to do it. So I think my positive obliviousness maybe is what, what led to it. It's incredible. So, Thank you. so you're doing. Um, how did it start? Like with the characters, you were doing certain like left hand or right hand stuff, and then yeah, you grew into some major characters. I did. Yeah. I mean, usually you start off um, right handing, which is a, a form of apprenticing, basically where you. So for some Muppets, um, like Cookie Monster or Ernie or or Fozzie Bear, like you know they have a. Um, the performer, the main performer, is doing the voice and the head, and then there's another, and then they're also doing the left hand, and then there's another performer, which would be something like I did, mm-hmm. who does the right hand. So, they, which I would think would be really difficult. It's, I think it's probably twenty more times harder yeah. than than doing your own character, which is I think why they start you on that. Yeah, because you have to, it's all about listening mm-hmm. to the other person and learning their rhythms, and you have to really follow. And it's like, and I I screwed up so many takes because of, you know, a bad right hand. Like, it's it's really hard. It's, it's really like hard. It's like smacking the character. In the- <laughs> it's awful. It's totally like the hazing. It's like the college hazing hazing version of the <laughs> It's like you – it's it's so difficult. But um, – so I started off doing that. And then eventually, you know, because I was so young, they – you know, when you're 15 or 16, you think you have, like, a huge amount of voices. You don't – every voice sounded exactly the same. Yeah. So it took me a long time to get my voices and my characters. But eventually you start moving into that. It's cool. Um, now, do you have a cool Jim Henson story, don't you? Or you? I do. I do. I have a really special one. I um, I kind of owe every. I do owe everything puppetry wise to Jim, um, and I never met him. Um, but the the long the short version of a very long story is I wrote to him when I was. Um, I feel like I'm in therapy, by the way. I'm, yeah. I'm like, this is Let me safe tell house. you, this is a safe house. Um, <laughs> Uh, when I was about eight years old or so, I wrote to Jim and basically wrote him a very honest letter that you write as a kid where you don't, mm. like, edit out and delete and white out. But I just wrote this very honest letter saying, like, I want to be a puppeteer. You're my hero. I want to work for the Muppet someday. Like, that's my dream. Um, and I didn't hear back for, like, almost a year. And this is where it gets – this is where it starts to get weird. The day I sat down to write another letter to him, there was a knock at the door. And it was my postman with a package from the Jim Henson Company. So I was like, oh, great. So, you know, and what's another kind of positive thing? I didn't think, oh, Jim didn't write me back because he doesn't care. I, wrote, I was like, oh, he just must, must not have gotten my letter. Lost, yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course, right? So I, so I write this other letter. <clears throat> package comes. And I open it up. And it's this beautiful uh, signed autograph photo from Jim. Um, to Which me. you still have? Please I do. Okay. I do. I do. And then um, a letter from a secretary saying like, oh, you know, Jim... Jim loves these kind of letters. Like it means a lot to him. Thank you so much, you know, for writing and, and, you know, he'll, he'll, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll keep aware of this, I guess. Didn't think anything more of it. And then a couple months later, I guess a year or so later, I guess it's many years later now that I always get lost in the chronology because to me, it's like, I'm still that, I can still like, it all feels like the same time. I, yeah, I gotcha. Maybe a year or two later, I was at school. And this is at the time of the new Mickey Mouse Club. Remember that with like oh, Justin the Timberlake, MMC. At the yeah, MMC, the MMC, Just shooting down at MGM Studios, yeah. which I refuse to call anything else. But MGM <laughs> well, get ready for a third <clears throat> name change. I know, I know. Okay, so uh, and I get this call to to go to the pr- the principal's office at school, and I'm thinking I'm in trouble. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, what did you get in trouble? <laughs> I know. I was like, well, it was Josh probably like skipping class to play with his puppets. <laughs> they probably were like, can you not bring your frack rock tote bag to school? <laughs> um, which is what I did. So I, I get called down, and they're like, this is why I love Josh. <laughs> it's all true. So uh, I'm trying to think of the age. Yeah, I must have been ten at this age. 
at this point. Um, so they, they call me into the principal's office and they're like, you have a phone call. So I pick up the phone and she's like, hi, I work for the, the new Mickey Mouse Club and um, Jim Henson's going to be a guest on the show. And I'm already like, what's happening? Like my mind is like swirling. And she's like, um, and uh, we we're, Jim's going to be on for guest day. And, you know, we always have a kid come on, a real kid come on and interview the celebrities. Would you want to um, be, would you want to be considered for that? And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And so I had to like, it was, it was like me, like 36 other kids. And I had to like write a letter and send a photo and like write like 20 questions that I would ask him. And it's this crazy thing. And this is what's amazing is it got narrowed down to like me and one other kid, like legit. It was me and one other kid. And if I had one, I would have flown to California, spent a day with Jim on the set at whatever he was filming at the time, basically lived out my dream. And of course, and I understand this now because I work in production, they picked the kid who already lived in California. Uh, yeah. Of course. Of course they did. So I was devastated. I was like, this is a lie. Life is a lie. And then like, like a few months later, he passed away. Um, so I was I was devastated, and and so many years later, <clears throat> excuse me, I wrote to Kevin Clash, who does Elmo on Sesame Street, or did Elmo on Sesame Street, and uh, uh, he invited my family to come see us see a Sesame Street being filmed. And so we came out and we're on the set, and then like we have a lunch break, and we're sitting there, and I was very ballsy, I guess, as a kid that age, and I was like, so why did you why did you like call me? Because he called my my home. Um, he's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, you get like thousands of letters because this was like the height of dinosaurs and yeah. Tiffany Elmo. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, Jim used to talk about you. Wow. And I was like, wait, wait what? Wow. Um, and he's, and she, he was like, yeah, he's like, Jim used to talk about you and I recognized your name. Wow. And you know, that was also, I probably didn't say this clearly, but that, wow. was, but that was also, Jim was the, by the way, Jim is also the reason why the new Mickey Mouse Club called me because you know, they, he had given a bunch of names of like, well, these are kids that are puppeteers that might want to come do this. So, so even though I never got to meet him, Essentially, he knew, I, you. He knew yeah, you. Yeah, and I, I, I just recently spoke to his uh, former assistant, who's now a producer, in the, the last month, and she, we were just talking, and I was telling her my story, and, and I told her the story, and she's like, "Oh yeah, that sounds right." She's like, "Jim, Jim would always look out for new talent." So it kind of confirms that like this wasn't some weird thing I'd made up, but so it's really special. It's like I never got to meet him, um, but but it, but because of him and because of his kindness, I, I have my career. It's kind of the best story. Yeah, yeah, it's very special. You know, that's an incredible story that you got because of writing a letter. Yeah. And Pat and I, I'm sure, get similar types of comments all the time. Like, how do you get these experiences? It's because you ask for them. Like, that's all you yeah. have, that's not all you have to do, but that's step one. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and, you, and you, you can't be afraid to like reach out to people. And like, I feel like that's, that's always the lesson I, I try to, you know, put out there too is like writing, especially writing a letter as yeah. opposed to just an email or a tweet or something. When you write a letter, it says it's someone that you took the time. And, and oftentimes, you know, you just have to make that first step. Like, and you can't, you can't negate yourself out of it. You can't say, oh, this will never happen or they'll never read it. You know, it's, you yeah. just never know. It's incredible. Thank you. Anyway, yeah. Pat. Yeah, moving on to actually Disney moving in your career. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, so you actually started out in Disney theatricals for Disney. I did. What, I did. what exactly? What was that like? Was um, that step? It was cool. I got to do Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. I was the Lumiere. Were you the um, final Lumiere? I was not. I was supposed to be, and mm -hmm. then my um, then Johnny and the Sprites got greenlit for a second season, so I I couldn't finish. Oh shock! So you got a TV show. So <laughs> you couldn't stay on Broadway. I know. Although it was really hard for me because I was like, I'm going to be part of history. I'm going to be the final Lumiere, and then I couldn't do it. Uh, <laughs> Um, <laughs> Once again, this is why I love Johnny, because his priorities are there. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, well, I can't be like, guys, you have to wait for me to, to do this. Um, uh, but no, I, yeah, I got to do it uh, towards the end of its run on Broadway. And it was, it was my, it's actually my favorite Broadway experience, you know, with everything else wow. I've done. It was such a Which special... Which includes, let's just put the list. Avenue Q. And Shrek. Beauty and the Beast. Shrek. Yeah. Are those the three? Yeah. Or am I missing anything? Those are the three. Okay, cool. Don't rub it in, it's only been three. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I expected more. Uh, no, and you know, it, it was so special. And it was, it, it's funny because I think, you know, I was a replacement, mm -hmm, which, mm -hmm. which for those of you who don't know, that just means that basically, you know, when you're a replacement in a Broadway show, you get no rehearsal. You get like two weeks of rehearsal and then you're suddenly on stage doing the show. And that's a huge show. The original was huge and big and there was a lot John, of... admit it. You were rehearsing this in your bedroom for years. <laughs> like, like, well, it this. definitely helped that I knew it. Like, <laughs> like, like the musical director was like, you already know these harmonies. I was like, I know, that's crazy. Like, I, I, I just <laughs> learned really fast. Like, what? I don't know how I know that. Um, and I'd seen the show a of few course. times because of course it was Disney and it was yeah. on Broadway. And, and it's, a fantastic, it's a, like, fantastic it's a fantastic show. It's a fantastic show. Yeah. What is it one more time? Fantastic show. Um, um, I thought you were saying Fantasmic, and I was like, that's funny. Ba -bum 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 um, sorry. <laughs> we all have ADD. We all did the same thing. <laughs> ah, we have issues. People watching are like, I can't keep up. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I, I, I was, uh, it was special. It was really special. And I remember it was very moving. I got really choked up every night at the end of the show. Um, it was staged that Lumiere and Cogsworth and everyone's transformed and mm-hmm. we're like our human versions. And we'd end, um, singing, you know, certain as a son, ah, right. And it ends with us going, ah, this big note. And me and Cogsworth, if you were Cogsworth, like, look at each other and like do this like thumbs up thing. And I don't know why it was like the gloriousness of like that music or something. Every night I would lose. You'd lose it. This is literally what it would sound like. It'd be like, oh. <laughs> you never do the last note because I was so emotionally like excited to be part of this. And like just watching how people reacted to it. And I just love the story. It was it was really special. Well, they did a, such a fantastic job like mm-hmm. translating that stitch. Plus, you said yeah. that's your favorite Disney, anima- Disney animated yeah. movie. Yeah, so. that too. I mean, it had a lot um, of history. And the music is like every song on that show. And all the new music they wrote for the show is And there's three beautiful. new songs coming to the live action movie. I know, starring Emma Watson. I can't <laughs> and apparently this close to getting If I Can't Love Her in the movie. But it got cut. I, I heard that. I heard they're not doing that. I love If I Can't Love Her. It's a great song. Ugh. It's a great song. In any case... But yeah, that was very special. And then, you know, the funny thing that people don't know is, you know, Lumiere, I think the new version's touring doesn't do this, but the original version had, gonna ask had if, live if flames, flames. Yeah. Which were, it's kind of crazy. Like, I'm like, this happened. Like, <laughs> they, they would like, you know, you had like butane packs on your back. So like little butane bottles like that big, which is enough to kill you. Like, if yeah. it's <laughs> and then there were, they, like, which would go to like through tubes in your arm. And then there was like, essentially like a taser uh-huh. that would like ignite it's it. Yeah. It's like. It's insane. And like, here's the best part is like, you'd think they'd be like, well, this guy has live flames on his, on his body. Like we should make sure that he gets at least three or four or five rehearsals before he's in front of an audience. Nope. One. Wow. One. Wow. And the best part is the pyro guy's like loading me up and he's like putting the stuff on my back. I'm like, and I'm, you know, already crapping myself that I have to rem- remember everything. And, and you have what's called a put in, mm-hmm. which is where the cast who's doing the show comes in on like a rehearsal day, they're all like not really wanting to be there. Because, like, <laughs> yeah. You know, they're tired. They're doing eight shows a week. Yeah. So n- 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 no one's really glad to be there. And everyone's in regular street clothes except for you. You're in your costume. Oh, oh that's going to be so weird. It's so weird. <laughs> and you're, you're, the put in is basically to te- to give you a chance to run the show with the full company, with the set, with the lights, with everything mm-hmm. before you go on usually that night. Yeah. Wow. So they're, pu- they're, they're getting me ready, right? I'm already nervous for this. And, um, Lumiere had this, had this big hairy wig thing that he would wear, mm-hmm. which is bizarre, but it was, it was this wig. And so the guy's getting ready. He's like, all right, listen. So, you know, you got this many pounds of butane, this and that, blah, blah, blah. He's loading me up and he's like walking me to like the wings for my first entrance for this pudding. He's like, you got nothing to worry about. He goes, everything on the stage is flame proof to the curtains, the other props, the costumes. And I'm like, oh, I'm thinking, oh, that's good. And then he goes, everything except for your wig. Good luck. <laughs> totally true. So the one thing on that stage, Why? I don't know. There was something about, it was like yak hair and they couldn't flame proof it. I mean, maybe they were pulling my leg, but all I can tell you is every night for the first like two weeks, I was like, <laughs> like if you had taken a freeze frame, I probably looked like a crazy person because I was like, because I was like, I'm going to be that, I'm going to be the first one here to like set the place on fire. <laughs> I'm a bit of a pyromaniac. So I feel Are like, you, you oh yeah, liked it. I love it. So it was really cool. <laughs> well, and I got in trouble because I would use it for expression, like backstage as a joke. Oh. Like someone would say something, I'd be like, Shh, like that, you know? And they were like, you can't do it back here. I'd be like, sorry. But I, I just love that power. You know? <laughs> Once I got used to it, I liked it. But that's, I mean, that's a crazy process. The whole like one rehearsal. Oh, it's more fun. And yeah. What and, and that was their second show, right? That was before Shrek. So that was so it was it was Avenue Q, then that, then Shrek, and and, and Avenue Q. You workshopped, you oh, did off Broadway, yeah. like you were with that show rehearsing forever. So yeah, that, it was basically one extreme. To well, a we huge all show. were in the same boat, you know. Yeah. It's like all seven of us, and no Avenue flames, Q, and no <laughs> flames on stage. Well, that's the other thing is like the show was Avenue Q was so small, and it's one set, nothing mm-hmm. moves. Yeah. You know, there's like nothing, cr- and so, at, so to go from that to Beauty and the Beast, where it's like there's pyro, there's a trap door, there's things moving. It's like you could literally get hurt. You could, and I was that part. Like first rehearsal, I was like, "Yeah, that's like, terrifying." It was terrifying, but it was so much fun. It was so much fun. It's crazy. So you mentioned a little earlier uh, a little TV show called Johnny and the Sprites, yes. which was uh, huge. How did that come about? It was actually um, when I was doing Avenue Q. Rich Ross, who was the the then president of the Disney Channel, came and saw the show. And this is one of the situations where you're like, you need to be more organized in your life, John Tartaglia. He sent a letter backstage, and it was like, you know, I'm Rich Ross. I'm the president of Disney Channel. I'm really I loved the show. I would love to speak with you about, um, you know, creating something together, which was amazing. And I was, so, but I was so. I mean, I'm not. I'm not defending myself, but I was so crazy at that time because it was right around the Tony Awards. It was. It was an insane time. That I put it on nominated, this, like, nominated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was like, and it's like you don't realize like when you're in a Broadway show, like you're doing eight shows a week, but you're also yeah. doing all the press events. It's crazy. So I put it, I put it in a stack. I can see it in my head. I put it on a stack next to my table, 
in the dressing room. And I was like, I'll get to that. And like two weeks went by, which is, don't ever do that. Like yeah, if, if the too president long. of a television network <laughs> says, I want to work with you. It's actually not as long as I thought you were going to say. Really? I, I thought you were no. going to like a month, month and a half. Even two weeks, like two weeks, like yeah. three days is too long. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I, he said very, to his credit, sent another very kind letter saying, I'm not sure if you got my first letter, but so. He pulled the Jim <clears> Henson <throat> with he, you. He did. He was wow. like, here, here's a second letter. So I, we met up for dinner and he was like, you know, I'm really a big fan of what you do. And I, I saw in your bio that you worked on Sesame Street and the Muppets. I said, yeah. And he said, well, you know, would you ever want to create a television series for us? And I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was it. It was like, it was basically, um, you know, I mean, we went through a series of processes, processes and development, but he basically kind of gave me the keys of the kingdom. So, uh, and what's funny is I come up with the idea for that show when I was 16. Mm-hmm. Um, not for me to be in it. I was kind of the last element to be added to it, but I, I'd come up with this idea for like a television show about, um, sprites kind of mythology based and taking place in a forest. And I named them, I named like the two main characters and I just put it away and never thinking about it. And then when he said, do you have any ideas? I was like, ding, 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 ding. I was like, Oh, actually, yeah, I do. And so that's, that's kind of where, where it all came from. Um, but yeah, so it all started from a very kind letter and, and, you know, letters are important. Yeah. <laughs> <Seriously>. <laughs> letters. Anything that's in my history, it's letters. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And you had some, there's, so it was musically themed. There's a lot of music in the show. Yes. Yes. Got Steven Schwartz. Steven did, Schwartz. Did wrote, he do the theme song? He wrote a theme song and he wrote uh, our Christmas episode, which is my favorite song. I love that song. Um, we had amazing people. We had Gary Adler and Phoebe Kreutz. Gary is the, one of the co-creators of, um, Alter Boys. Okay. Um, uh, Larry O'Keefe, who wrote Lee Blonde and Bat Boy, the musical. I love Bat Boy. Yeah. yeah. With the guys who wrote You're in Town, um, uh, Benj uh, and Justin, who are, at the time were like these two young college kids. Now they wrote Christmas Carol. Not, yeah. No, Christmas Story, the musical. Oh, okay. And th- it's crazy. Like we had, we had so many wonderfully talented people. Basically, every composer on Broadway wrote <laughs> for Johnny and the Sprites. And of course, Stephen Schwartz, Disney fans, lyrics for Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, did you see that? Pocahontas. Did you I see- didn't. I missed it. Johnny! So I know, I know, I know. Oh I know. goodness. I know. Every opportunity I had, I was doing another show at the time, and it was like our schedule's always... Album is coming out soon. Oh, that's so, right. That's yeah. right. No, I, I I love that music. I love that movie. Oh, my God. That's a great movie. It's underrated, I think. Yeah, it's totally underrated, underrated, and honestly, one of the best stage musicals I've ever seen in my life. Really? Oh, I hope they do something with it. It's Yeah, well, Broadway, hello. <laughs> oh, I'm so angry. Don't even get me going. Don't even get I want to get... Schumacher on here and be like, so, <laughs> Hunchback, uh, when's that getting to Broadway? he tell you. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, Johnny and the Sprites. Now, t- I don't know if this is true or not. I heard that, did you do a Johnny and the Sprite show in the park? I did. Okay. I did. That's so weird. This was at the, was it MGM Studios? It was still time? MGM. Okay. It was two two years. We did it twice. It was so much fun. They, Playhouse Disney, right? Was it yeah. in the, the one, the... Bear in the Big Blue House, I think, was in the yeah the Playhouse before. Disney. Well, that was that was like the permanent show. Yeah. So we we went down. They had a series of concerts they would do called like Playhouse Disney Live, and and so like one week it would be like the Imagination Movers, the next week would be us, the next week after that would be the Wiggle. Like it was everyone kind yeah. of kicked out. So we did it in what what's now most recently the American Idol stage. Oh, okay. You the Hyperion. That? Yeah, yes. we did it there. And then he's like, okay. It's not the American. Oh, is it's, it? No, it's Frozen Sing Along. It's, it's going to be Frozen. Yeah, right now, it's Frozen I have not been in that space since Doug Live has gone away. Oh, I love Doug Live. Uh, yeah, so, so did I. <laughs> did not live nearly long enough. Um, yes. On 21 guys, Jumbo Street. Guys, give us a minute. Street. He needs a minute, guys. He needs a minute. Remember that? 21 Jumbo Street. It was so good. <laughs> We're just gonna. Sorry. No. Um. Uh. Yeah. We did. Oh, sorry. I hit the microphone. We did it there the first year, and then the second year we did it in this like pop up theater. You know where they're building the new theater between Rock and Roller Coaster and Tower of Terror? Yes. Yes. Mm. It was. It was a temporary version of what they're building now. Okay. We did there, but it was really cool. I mean, to be inside the park and the kids must have freaked out. I mean, you were you were Johnny from Johnny and the Sprite. Yeah. Like it was really it was very special because it's like you know when you do a TV show you're in a studio. And you know that you're in a bubble, and you, yeah. see, you know you just see the people who work on the show. There's no live audience. There's no one. There's no one to react to. Yeah. And you just kind of put it out there, and you hope people like it. So it was really neat to actually get to meet the kids who watched it and see. The, and there's so many families who like, you know, um, puppetry is really special in the autism community for opening people up oh, and for communicating. Um, sometimes kids can't talk to humans, but they mm-hmm. will talk to puppets. So watching that mm-hmm. happen live was just like so powerful. And it was really special to know you were part of that. There's something very weird about talking to a puppet. And <laughs> and like, seriously, I interviewed Rod Periwinkle. Yes, who you yes. didn't have any cue, and you're sitting, you're sitting there next to me and you got this thing in your arm. I'm telling you, I couldn't not look at Rod 
when you were right there and it's mm -hmm. very weird and you're like well, that's the hope this is so easy to get lost in like it's ridiculous it's and funny to watch adults i mean obviously you guys are very like you know open fun magical people so like you're gonna get in it but like watching really like stone-faced serious people like <laughs> news anchors and stuff like i had <laughs> so much fun giving them and like playing with them and like and like you would see it like you you know you'd walk in they'd be like oh god i gotta do this thing with a puppet and like you know 20 minutes later they're like ah, they're totally in it. but it's because it's there's something primal about it and it's like you can't mm -hmm. it's magic like it's not a piece of film and it's not in a computer which is what so much of what we enjoy today is it's real it's there in front of you and you can touch it and it's and it's like you can't like i can explain because i do it yeah what i'm doing but like if you don't know what that is you're kind of in i think it's i think it's entrancing and you're you're a friend of Elmo's, right? Right. I, I have I have very r rarely understudied him. Okay. Yes. Have yes. you done the talk show circuit with? No, him? No, 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 no. Okay. Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any desire. It's crazy. All right. So a lot of people already know this because I've talked about it before. But at Disney California Adventure, they have a. Uh, Aladdin, the musical spectacular yes. show that's been running for 13 years now. I, know, I love it. But it's sadly closing yes. for another musical. Frozen. Yes. But, but we got Aladdin on Broadway, so yes. that's kind of the reason that they might be getting rid of it. But sure. anyway, you had some little uh, dabble in an Aladdin show. I did. I, what did uh, you do there? I got to play the genie in the... It, it, when, so what happened with the Broadway version of Aladdin was mm -hmm. they did it at the Fifth Avenue Theater in Seattle, uh, which is actually where we did Shrek out of town. Great theater. And then they kind of took like a pause where they were trying to figure out like the, the nuts and bolts of it to fix it for Broadway. So they licensed it out to two different theaters. And the Muni, which is where I do a lot of work in St. Louis, was one of them, which is an amazing, if you've never been to the Muni. What have else have they done? I have not. No, have it's an outdoor, there? right? This it's giant... outdoor. It's the oldest outdoor theater in the country. It's hmm. uh, 11,000 seats. Wow. It's like, it's like basically performing in front of a stadium. It's crazy. Um, so I've done a, a bunch of shows there. I directed two shows there. I performed in two. Uh, but I got to play the genie, Aladdin there. And so I, I, I'm only the second person, I guess, technically to have played that role before it came to Broadway after James, who, mm -hmm. who originated on Broadway. It was so much fun. Oh, did it he do it before so you as well? So yeah, he did it at the Fifth oh, Avenue okay. and then I did it at the Muni and then another guy did it at Tuacon. Tuacon, I went Tuacon. to. You've been to Tuacon? I did. I saw, what did I see there? Oh, Little Mermaid. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They do. So imagine that. Like, that's the kind of spectacle. By thing. the way, brief little note here. Tuacon is right next to the Inn at Entrada, which is where they shot High School Musical 2. And perhaps that's where I stayed when I went. <laughs> Just say. <laughs> really? Yes. I love only, only Jeff. Only Jeff. I'm only sure Jeff. it wasn't <laughs> only me. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm going to book this just because High School Musical 2 shot here. <laughs> that's, that is true. <laughs> Like but that. it was a nice happenstance that Mermaid was playing, which I never got to see on Broadway. Yeah, I'll tell you. Know, yeah. So. Um, so yeah, so I got to play the genie. It was so much fun. It was so. so much the fun. Uh, Aladdin went through how many? Pre they did one in Seattle. One in Seattle, then um, then the Broadway version, mm -hmm. and then they did a version in Toronto, and then it came to New York to okay. Broadway. But um, Muni was part of that journey. Muni was like, yeah, it was kind of like you know, while they were trying to figure out what to do to make it right for Broadway, they they were like, well, let's let's. Put it out there. Let's see if people like it. So we did it at the Muni, and they, and they did it to a con. But uh, it was so much fun. It was like the most fun I've ever had. And it was Robin to Jesus. I thought Beauty and the Beast was the most fun you ever had. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's a phrase, it's okay. Jeff. John, a phrase. Has, John has a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun. No, it was really cool. And it was it was also it's another show where like you're part of it, and you're like, and like the lyrics. I was like, I don't have to memorize these at all. Like, yeah. I know Isn't that them nice? All, you know? Isn't that so nice? Except there's little... you guys probably have this experience. You know, there's lyrics like you think you're mm -hmm. singing the right lyrics. But you're not. You're not. Yeah. But also, when they go on stage, they often change the lyrics. Like I can't even tell you how long it took me yes, to get used yes. to the whole the new Newsies lyrics. Yes, because I was different. like, ah, this is so weird. I hate them. And then you listen, you're like, I love these so much. It's so much better. I love <laughs> well, these choices. These were the original, but I just had been singing them incorrectly <laughs> for years. And and you know, and Robin Williams was a huge, uh, I just a hero to me. I just loved him as a comedian. So to get to do that character and emulate what he did, you know, which my, my genie was very different from what James does. I mean, James does his own thing and they, mm -hmm. for, for the Muni version, they really wanted a more movie like genie. So I got to really pull out all my impressions and it was so much fun. It was That's great. cool. I've, I've only seen video of it, but I did notice that I think it was the end of the show. Uh, Aladdin and Jasmine ride off in a golf cart. Well, what was that about? <laughs> I'm a little confused. So this was this was before they afford an elf. <laughs> right, right. This is before they had done flying at the Muni, really. Okay. Um, so, so it was a very creative approach to how to, because also you have to keep in mind, like, like most stages to cross from like stage right to stage left takes five seconds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the Muni, because it's so Massive. wide, it's like a thirty second. Yeah. Cross. So there were there were some creative ideas, but yeah, I got to I got to make my entrance in a, on a motorcycle actually. Whoa. Down, down the side of the theater into the, onto the stage. It was so much. That's fun. cool. Yeah, except for the except for the fact that I had these huge like pantalone. Yeah. Like you know, like MC Hammer can't touch his mm -hmm. pants. I had like huge versions of that on. 
and they like they <laughs> another like well, let's just rehearse this one. <laughs> so yeah. this this guy named Bubba. <laughs> It was his name, uh-huh. drove me around on the motorcycle, and, like, I'd never ridden on a motorcycle in my life, and I didn't know that it gets, like, hot, you know, back there. Okay. So I had to, like, hold my pants, like, in my lap, uh. like, you know, like, so they didn't burn, and hold on to this guy named Bubba, <laughs> while we're, like, riding down the side of, 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 the, of the theater, and, like, and also say these lines, and, I mean, it was, like, it was it was crazy. It was really, I was, like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die <laughs> on a motorcycle dressed as the genie. All I'm going to say is, folks, <laughs> look at what we do for your entertainment. <laughs> Like, it's true. This is live crazy. flames, motorcycles. motorcycles. Seriously, theater is dangerous. I yeah. think is what it comes down. Yeah, there's to. time. There's close calls. Okay, and before we wrap it up here, we, we can't go without mentioning the new Muppet Show. Yes, which yes. of course I'm sure you have some insight on, and of course yes. you're probably watching. And I am. Fun. I am. You must have some friends working on it. I, I have a lot of friends working. On it, yeah. And what are your initial impressions with it? I love that it's the Muppets. Period. I don't know why. Oh, I see. But what you're saying. I yeah. love that. The title is the Well, that, that makes it different period. from the movie. Yeah. <laughs> which didn't yeah. have the period, I guess. True. But like that changes it. Um <laughs> I like it. I mean, you know, I think I think that I'm still getting used to the the tone of it, which is very different from mm-hmm. from the Muppets. And which might be changing soon. Yeah, I like. feel like I mean, I you know, and I, I I love it, but I feel like I I want the characters to be nicer to each other. I think yeah. that, that that's the one thing I miss is I miss the the kind of you know, yeah, they're crazy and they're wacky and they they disagree and they but like there's still a, a sense of love and yes. I think that that's what makes them up and some up. So I miss that, but I think they're doing an incredible job and I think you know it's it's hard for people to take this style, the mocking, like they're like, you know, it's so different. But the reality is like I think it may, it may have been Dave Goals who said it. It's true. Like Jim would have totally been doing this. I think too. Like I, you know, who can say? Who can predict yeah, what anyone yeah. would have done or wouldn't have done? But it seems like. Because the Muppet Show was was making fun of variety shows, which were the popular thing back in the seventies. That now, what do you see? You see The Office, you see Parks mm-hmm. and Rec, like you see these single camera shows. So I would think that that's probably what the Muppets would be. I love that everyone's like the same thing with like Walt. It's like Walt would Walt, 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 Walt will do that Walt today. Would, <laughs> I actually it's really so do. Hard. When people get into the whole argument of I can't believe there's no hand drawn animation anymore, I don't. I think Walt would have let go of that a long time ago. The guy was a man way ahead of his time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he would have been computer animation long before I think they they already are so well it's something that, they, my that jim henson and walt disney shared is they both had a love of how technology could forward entertainment yeah um so they, they both had their their hands inside of technology before it was even there's there's an amazing <laughs> there's an amazing video online actually you guys would probably love this you may not have seen this where it's like i think it's titled like jim henson predicts youtube have you seen this no it's incredible and it was i it was just kind of unearthed i guess a while ago but it was like a video of jim he did this experiment with these people where basically he was talking about how um technology could uh you know like how people would have like their own cameras and be filming their own stuff mm-hmm. you know this is like 1990 like, this yeah is, or 89 this is way before the internet and youtube but it's called he, pred- he predicts youtube but it, i'm sure that like he was always thinking ahead well even now there's like digital puppetry yeah that's yeah that's exactly right mm-hmm. which i've which i've gotten to do a little bit of and it's it's amazing i mean it's 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 the, the next version of puppetry and i for i love puppetry just because it's there it's so real like for me mm-hmm. meeting characters is always fun but mm-hmm. like there's a huge difference in my opinion pat will disagree with me but meeting mickey mouse is a, such a different experience than meeting kermit the frog you know hmm. kermit the, the kermit you meet not the big fuzzy one that they used to have at the MGM Studios, but the Kermit you meet is like the Kermit you see on TV and in yeah. films. Yeah, whereas yeah. Mickey, not so much. You know, it's the Ker- it's the Mickey I you see, see in saying. commercials, yeah, and, and not the drawn animated ones. So, well, I remember that when uh, Muppet Vision 3D opened in Disney Yay! World, I was so excited because I, I there was a, some wonderful interview with Jim where he was saying like, you know, we literally we're not trans we're not taking an animated character and turning it into an animatronic. We're literally just mm-hmm. like taking what the puppet is and putting yeah. it on top of an animatronic and making it move. So it's true. It's like when you see Bean Bunny up in like the balcony or you see the Swedish chef in the back, like that's what they look like. Yeah. They're made out of the same material. So it is cool. It's like you're really getting to see them for what they are. Weird random question about the Swedish chef that you would know. His hands are human, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I was mm-hmm. always like, are those human hands or are those just like really good gloves? No, they're because- human hands. In fact, it was actually, it was uh, in the Muppet Show days, it was Jim performing the, the head and the voice and then Frank Osborne right. would do his hands. and they, Oh, okay, both hands. Yeah. And oh, Frank apparently would love to like throw Jim off and just grab stuff. And of course they were such an amazing team yeah. that Jim would always follow it. So sometimes Frank would just randomly grab like a cleaver. Like I don't know what I like. And so it's, I, I wish I could have, that's the kind of thing I wish I'd been there on the set. Just like watching them. Work, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's incredible. So Pat, I think that pretty much wraps up our questions for John, except for, of course, trivia oh, yeah. time. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Normally we'll ask each other these questions, but okay. we're going to hit you with okay. them and see if you, how you do. <clears throat> you want to go okay. first? I'll go first. Sure. Um, so currently we're just talking about the Muppets TV show. Yes. Currently, uh, Miss Piggy and Kermit have split. Mm-hmm. This is actually not the first time that this happened. 
And do you know when and like kind of the history behind that? Would you mean like officially in the public? Yeah, yeah, like like press release. Oh, actually, yeah, it happened like, back in the nineties, didn't it? Early nineties, mm-hmm. they did it. Uh, oh, he knows. Was, <laughs> <laughs> only because I read an article about that, because uh, everyone was so surprised by it, and they were like, "Actually, this has happened before." But uh, yeah, and then they kind of like in, in the movies, they would like have like temporary. Well, th- that was always very confusing as a kid. The whole movie, like, because they had a wedding at the end of Muppets Take Manhattan, which I love. Right, and, right. But it was like, are they married or are they not married? And they made it even more confusing within the film. So whatever. But no, there was a split up in the early '90s. Yes. And do you know why it was like very short lived? I don't remember that part. I don't know. Okay, so May tenth, nineteen ninety. Does that sound around? Another? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, of so course. May tenth, nineteen ninety, is when uh, it was publicly announced that uh, Miss Piggy split up with Kermit. That's right. And now I think it's the opposite, right? Kermit broke up with Piggy. I think, this time. Right. I think that's right. So Miss Piggy broke up with Kermit because she was going to be an independent pig. Right. And they sent out the press release and everything. And so that was May 10th, 1990. Then, of course, May 16th, just six days later, Jim Henson passed away. Mm-hmm. And the company decided, you know, wasn't the time. So they kind of just pulled back on that. And, that's right. And kind of just let it be forgotten. Yeah. But that's... Uh, the, the moments I remember are the ones, like, in the films, like, Muppets Take Manhattan and, you know, and uh, Great Muppet Caper, where they'd have, like, their big mm-hmm. fight. Yeah. And then, you know, but then they'd always kind of get back together. Yeah. So, in any case, that's that. Wow. You, you aced that one. Well, kind of. No. <laughs> I got part of it. I got part of it. Uh, so, again, The Muppets, 1979, The Muppet Movie. Do you know who it was dedicated to? Yes, I do know this. Wow. Edgar Whoa. Bergen. Yes, it Whoa. was. Charlie McCarthy, yeah. Because did, did he pass away? He passed away, away as soon as he wow. filmed the yeah. scene. What? God, you're amazing. <laughs> You're such a nerd. I, 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 that's, <laughs> here. I would say not amazing, just a nerd. Yeah, yeah it's probably you're, that. Uh, you know what? You can come visit anytime. <laughs> talk Disney. It's all good. Uh, guys, that's going to do it for us this week. Round of applause for our guest, John thank Tartaglia. You, thank you, thank you. Yay. Thank you so much for coming. No, on. no, no one was injured. So. No, no one was in, no in the making of this podcast. <laughs> Somebody will trip as soon as we shut off the camera, I'm sure. <laughs> probably. But um, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. And guys, of course, to connect with us, everything's at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. We will see you next Next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Disney Coast to Coast. Have a magical day. All seven dwarves have little hats on. All yeah. seven dwarves, speaking of during Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, there's a photo op with all seven dwarves. Yeah, in Christmas, there's one when they all have Santa hats on. That's incredible. Yeah, I have one from Christmas, and specifically, I didn't know where to stand because there's so many of them. Yeah. So I just laid on the floor. Oh, okay. And then Dopey put his feet. On me like a stool. Next time, lay on their lap. That too. Yeah, that's a yeah. I thought that I was like, what a great, what a crazy photo op. Especially if you're dressed as Snow White, which I was not for mm. Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Disappointed. I know. Next time, I'll go with Snow White. Yes. <laughs>